Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. My name is Elijah, aka Haji Vasana, aka Nerd Lust Daddy, and on today's episode, we're going to continue our review series on every North American theatrically released live action video game movie adaptation. And today's episode should be another exciting one as we're reviewing yet another martial arts movie. Well, yes, you heard it. Mortal Kombat. I'm stoked to get in this one. Definitely for sure here. How about you, Pids? I will. Well, all right, let's get into this. Mortal Kombat the film was released in theaters on August 18, 1995. At this time, three games have been released in the series. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, and Mortal Kombat 3. The plot of all of the games is pretty much the same. They just end up escalating the stakes by adding more characters and introducing even more formidable foes who were secretly controlling the motivations of Outworld behind the scenes. Now this film is mostly based on Mortal Kombat with just a splash of Mortal Kombat 2 thrown in, so we'll use those for our comparison. In Mortal Kombat the game, the plot involved a tournament between the best fighters of Earthrealm and Outworld. These competitions happen once in a generation and are held on Shang Tsung's island on Earthrealm. Outworld has won the last nine times, and if they can win the 10th straight tournament, they'll be allowed to merge with and invade Earthrealm. The film is mostly based on the original Mortal Kombat game, and the plot's exactly the same, so there isn't much more to say here, as they nail it exactly as it is. This is a clear hawoo from me. Pids, what about you? Hawoo! For the setting and world representation here, we definitely get to see uh, fairly accurate ones. We get to see Shang Tsung's island as well as representations of the special moves of the characters from the games. There are some slight liberties taken with some of the special moves, particularly with Scorpion Spear, but not many more. And unlike the film version of Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat the movie retains the fighting tournament format from the games. I really can't find fault with the setting and world representation here, so I've got to give it a hawoo. Pids, what did you think about it? Hawoo! So far so good. What about the character representation? Let's go ahead and we'll start with Jax. Now he made his debut in Mortal Kombat 2 and is a member of the US Special Forces along with Sonya. Now, together they work to track down the leader of the Black Dragon mercenaries, Kano, in order to be able to bring him to justice. Now in the film he still has that same goal. The problem here is that he looks nothing like his game counterpart. We never see any of his special moves and he's barely in the movie, only appearing in a couple of scenes right at the beginning. Clearly he was just tacked on here, and this is definitely a chip fighter for me. Pids, how do you feel about Jax? Chip fighter. Reptile. In the games, he's a reptilian humanoid form and is one of Shang Tsung's loyal servants. We get the same here, only they make him at first a bipedal reptilian creature that eventually gains humanoid form. Now this doesn't align with the games in regards to that reptilian creature form, but taking a look at his humanoid form, we get a good representation. We get to see one of his special moves in the form of the acid spit, but this only happens while in his reptilian form. It also doesn't cause any real damage and just temporarily blinds the person that it gets used on. I th think they did alright though with Reptile, so he gets at least a pass from me. Pids, what are your thoughts on him? Hawoo! Kitana. She first appeared in Mortal Kombat 2 as the Princess of Outworld and was the stepdaughter of Shao Kahn. Now, while aligned with Outworld, she secretly worked against them and eventually turns on them to help the Earthrealm warriors due to finding out her real father had been murdered by Shao Kahn. We do have a similar backstory in the film, so that aligns. The main issues I have is that she doesn't really look like she does in the games, we see no representation of her special moves, and she's rarely in the movie and mainly serves as kind of an ex machina at points. Uh, better luck in the sequel, I say, as this one's a chip fighter for me. Pids, what are your thoughts on Katana? Chip fighter. Sub-Zero. Now here's an iconic character that's been around since the first game. He was a member of the Lin Kui clan who had murdered Scorpion, who was a member of the rival Shiria Ryu clan. Now, in the film, he serves as one of Shang Tsung's loyal servants. Well, the backstory here doesn't really align, but we do get a fantastic physical representation. He looks accurate, and we get liberal use of his special moves, including the Ice Freeze. Now, in spite of the difference in backstory, I really like this representation here, so Sub-Zero definitely gets a hoo-woo from me. Pids, how did you like him? Oh, woo! 
Scorpion. Now, in the games, as discussed previously, he was a member of the Shirai Ryu clan that was murdered by Sub-Zero. He then was resurrected and sought vengeance against Sub-Zero. Here in the film, he serves as another one of Shang Tsung's servants, so this doesn't match up. But again, we do mostly get fantastic physical representation. He looks like the character from the games, we get one of his fatalities, and we do get the spear, though they alter it a bit to be this type of like living beaked rope-like creature that comes out of his hand for some reason. In spite of the couple alterations though, I still found this character enjoyable as well, and I can give him a pass. Pids, what did you think about Scorpion? Oh, woo! Kano. The game set him up as an Australian and the leader of the Black Dragon Clan mercenaries. He hears rumors of the riches to be found on Shang Tsung's island and goes there intending to loot them. His direct rivals include Sonya and Jax, who seek to bring him to justice for his numerous crimes. In the film, we have a similar backstory, only with Kano working directly with Shang Tsung, under promise of riches if he lures Sonya to the island. So we have a slight diversion here. Physically, he looks very similar in regard to his face, if not his outfit. We don't get to see any of his special moves unless you count him pulling out his knife, but he never throws it like in the games. Still, the cocky and sadistic portrayal of him aligns well, and I found him enjoyable enough to give him a pass here. Pids, uh, how did Kano work for you? How will? Sonya Blade. Now, the game series presents her as a member of the U.S. Special Forces along with Jax. She's on a mission of vengeance to track down Kano for the crimes he's committed as leader of the Black Dragons. In the film, we get the same backstory. As to physical representation, she looks similar to Sonya, but the outfit never matches. We do get a representation of her special move, the leg grab. And her portrayal seems spot on as the take no nonsense out for justice member of the U.S. Special Forces. I think she is close enough that I can certainly give her a hoo Pids, what's your take on Sonya? Hello! Johnny Cage. Now within the game series, he's a Hollywood martial arts action movie star. He enters into the tournament in order to prove that he's a real martial artist and that he doesn't rely on camera and other Hollywood special effects tricks in the movies. Here in the film, it's exactly the same. He also has a good physical representation even if we never get an accurate outfit, but we do get the iconic glasses. And as for special move representation, we get the split punch, and we even get his friendship for Mortal Kombat 2. Now the portrayal's also spot on as the cocky and overbearing action movie star who still has skills and a loyal heart. Johnny's definitely a hoo for me. Pids, what's your take on Johnny? Hoo Goro. Now the games have Goro in the position of Shang Tsung's most loyal servant and right hand man. He's reigned as Mortal Kombat champion for the last 500 years, having won the last nine tournaments. Now in the film, this backstory is exactly the same, and take a look at this physical comparison. It's pretty spot on other than having a strangely more elongated torso. The portrayal is also magnificent though and comes off like the overconfident and brutal Shokan warrior should. And I think we even get one special move in the form of the chest pound, even though it's just a single hit instead of multiple. I was quite impressed that they were even able to pull this character off, let alone have it be so accurate. So Goro is definitely a straight hoo for me again here. Pids, how about you? Uh, woo. Shang Tsung. Now Mortal Kombat 1 has him in the role of tournament coordinator and host on his island as well as master to current champion Goro. He's a sorcerer with the power to absorb people's souls which gives him their knowledge, skills, and the ability to shapeshift into their form. The film has him in this exact same role. We also seem to be going with the younger look from Mortal Kombat 2 although without any matching outfit, but we get plenty of soul stealing as well as some shapeshifting. The portrayal is the power mad sorcerer is spot on as well here, so this is another straight hoo for me. Pids? Hoo-woo! Liu Kang. Now in the game Mortal Kombat, he's a Shaolin monk that enters into the tournament in an attempt to protect Earthrealm from the forces of Outworld. He ends up defeating both Goro and Shang Tsung to become the new Mortal Kombat champion. In the film, it's very similar here, only with a little vengeance added as Shang Tsung has murdered Liu Kang's brother. We get some good physical representation, we even get to see his special move, the bicycle kick, and the portrayal is very good as the mostly calm and focused master of Shaolin Kung Fu. This is yet another straight hoo for me, most definitely. Pids, what's your thoughts on Liu? Hoo-woo! Raiden. 
Now the series has him set up as the Elder God of Thunder and an adversary to Shang Tsung and the forces of Outworld. He's also typically put in the role of protector and mentor to the warriors of Earthrealm. Uh, it also involved him taking a mortal form to compete in the tournament at the invitation of Shang Tsung. The film throws that aspect out, but it does keep the mentor and protector role. We get a good physical representation, as well as representations of his special moves like teleporting and shooting electricity. And the portrayal is also good from Christopher Lambert of Highlander fame, even if it's a bit over top at the times. I can definitely give him a woo. Pids, what do you think of him? A woo! Alright, on to final verdicts here. Quite frankly, I find that this film is fairly accurate in spite of some of the liberties it takes. Uh, the plot aligns is perfect, the setting and world representation is fairly spot on, and most of the character portrayals are either good or spot on. It is a bit cheesy throughout, but I'm partial to that kind of thing myself, and I can definitely give this movie a hoo woo. Pids, what do you think of Mortal Kombat? A woo! Agreed. I can easily give this one a solid 7z out of 10z. This isn't the pinnacle of video game film adaptations as it falters in some areas and again has that cheese factor that may make your mileage vary. But at the time and still to this day, it's a very good adaptation. I highly recommend checking this one out. Until next time, I want to thank you all for tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. Again, my name is Elijah aka Haji Osaune, aka Nerd Lust Daddy, reminding you all, do not be chip fudgers to each other. Body autonomy for everyone, and peace, love, and happiness to all. Pids, tell the people goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>